with um with this video, um, I'd kind of like to take take like a moment and um, give like a basic breakdown of a plugin or an ESP, and maybe help kind of expand on you know like the concepts of records, fields, and 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 things like that in regards to like load order, data, uh, and just like modding in general. Um, and it's not really modding per se, um, it's just a programmatic way of allowing um, dynamic. You can sometimes call them inline, but dynamic changes to data that the program uses. Um, so for example, uh, you write a program that loads up data and displays something on the screen um, and you want to allow the user to make changes to what you see on the screen well some some games don't really give you that ability now um, file data structures and files can be broken down disassembled uh, decompressed and then recompiled recompressed back into what they used to call WAD files which is WAD back in the doom days uh, which is like a, just a file that has, it's like a one file that has many different files within that. Um, it's called a wad. It's like a giant wad of data. Once you know the format of it, you can break that data down, change it. Uh, so you can change textures, uh, sounds, different things, then recompile it back in that wad format. The game won't know any difference. It's just like, okay, I need this file. Um, I'm going to go to this wad file, look it up. I, I get what I need, and it doesn't care whether it came with the game or it's a uh, third-party modded. Um, it doesn't really care. Um, some games can check. Um, they can do certain types of, uh, I want to call it CRC checking, but they can do certain types of authentication on data to see if it's been changed. But, I mean, generally that's kind of like extreme cases. I don't think most games do that. Uh, but anyways, uh, back to what we're talking about. So... Um, let's just take a quick look at an ESP. Now, this is, and even ESM, this is going to be just basic uh, information. Uh, we're going to start out with just basic stuff. So, I'm not really going to break down every single field. There's a lot of fields in there. I'm not sure what they do. And believe me, there's quite a few because I don't know that much about field names versus what the data is associated with. But I do know a little bit about the structure. And so, I thought we would start with that. Okay, before we do that, um, this is a plugin list here. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit about the application I'm working on. Um, and if you have any like ideas, by all means, throw them my way uh, or criticisms. Let me, let me know what you think. Um, and it might be, it, it, it's probably going to be a really good idea. And um, I, you know, I, I would really look forward to putting that in the application. All right, so I don't have an option here to, to look at a game plugin to actually look at it at a binary level or a byte level. Um, I do have one here, which is edit save. I can go in here and bring this up using hex edit. So I can see the format, okay? So what I need to do is add this to this menu and it's pretty easy to do. So over here is the menu for uh, that particular list. Um, and there's, there's, um, this is basically the format of the menu. It's just what the user sees, uh, the function to call, the parameters you pass to it, icons to use. Very simple. Um, these particular menu items have varying function calls. Uh, they're, they're gated behind another function call depending on how you, whether you want, whether that function is true, false, uh, different types of things. So these options won't appear unless these conditions, in this case, are true. But we're gonna do it a little bit more simply. So I think what we're gonna do is, the first thing I wanna do is I need to find out, I wanna put up here, um, let's just put it here. It doesn't have to be, so we're just gonna put it here. And we're gonna put edit, um, plugin, I think. It'll probably be this, we'll just do edit, plugin, yeah, okay. So we want the user to see edit plugin, and I'm not sure what function to call yet. So what I'm gonna do is find where I've done this before, which is the save, uh, this is actually the save 
menu. This menu is what pops up when you click over here. This is the result of all of this. Uh, it's not much, and it's really, really simple. Um, I try to keep it as simple as possible for my sake too. Uh, so what I want to look for is where it says edit. Um, so we have to get this. We have to get this in here first, and this will make it a lot easier. So edit save. So what I want is this function call right here. Okay. So we're going to copy that. We're going to go back up here to the plugin section. And this is an abs this is this is a an absolute menu. You the menus can can basically one of three different things. They can be injected. Uh, you can have a default menu for everything or you can have a menu that is specific. This is a specific menu. So we're going to call this function. We're going to we're going to launch h we're going to launch hex edit and we're going to pass the link and that's it. So we're going to save it. And then we're going to go over here. We're going to take a look. We should now have I'll edit. Oops, I I missed my, I think I missed an equal sign. So let's go in here. I most certainly did. There we go. Okay. <laughs> that's better. Okay. So um, this menu option equals that function. And then we go over here and take a look, and we have edit plugin. So let's take a look at the sewers. So now I can edit, and it's as simple as that, and that's kind of like how I made this extensible. All right, so now to the plugins. When you look at this, like let's say that uh, there is a breakdown. Um, you can Google a breakdown. Some of the um, Bethesda modding teams across the board have broken these files apart. Uh, through trial and error, um, and I'm just going to show you a very, very, uh, a couple simple concepts um, and where information comes from, be it Rybash, XEdit, or or anything that looks at this, uh, looks at ESP or ESM, looks at plugins. So let's look at the very top here. You notice that you have TES4, okay, and the next thing is um, an S. Uh, but we won't look at the S part. So, and you can see uh, before I talked about hexadecimal values, an S is a hex 53. But TES4, this is what they call a file identifier. Um, some, some call it a file header or part of the header. Um, but it identifies, uh, sometimes they call it like a magic number. Uh, but it, it really identifies what type of data what, what type of data the file has. And what I mean by type of data is the format. Um, for example, you could have a file that has first name, last name, and, and you call it file one. This, let's say, is FIL1, and it has first name, last name, but then you have FIL2, which is a different file format, file type, that has last name, first name. And you would need to know which type of file you're dealing with so you can properly parse the fields and the data inside that file because if you don't have the right format then the data is going to be incorrect or simply it's not going to work at all because you're going to be trying to put an alphanumeric value which are letters in a numeric value which is numbers uh, in a variable and that's not going to work. Um, there is a way around it um, but we're just talking about things just more just in the basic term. Okay so you can see that you've got TES4. Now different files, uh, whether it's Morrowind, Skyrim, they have different formats. So you will notice between Fallout 4, between Skyrim, Oblivion, the TES sometimes stays the same. You can have a TES3. I think Oblivion and uh, Skyrim 32-bit might share a TES3 format, although it might be TES4. And you have different versions of TES4. You could have TES4 which is 1.0, 2.0, 2, you know, 1.3. You have different versions. But what I want to show you is the basic kind of stuff. So you can see, if you look in here, some of this stuff we can read, some of it we can't. We have H-E-D-R. And I want you to go ahead and take a look, and you have C-N-A-M. Okay, and you keep looking, you got data. See, you got an INTV. So you have all these different INCC, keyword, keywords, EDID, um, TNAM, full, Okay, so you have all these four character identifiers. This goes back to um, probably, I want to say, in the 80s. I want to say it goes back to the 80s, the time of the Amiga. 
Um, Amiga, uh, when uh, the Amiga programmers, the operating system, they chose an open source file format. They didn't go, well, some of the things might have been proprietary, but they really decided to go open source with a lot of things. Um, the operating system was not open source, but they decided to go open source with some data formats. Like, for example, a GIF, a GIF, is a particular format. And I'll show you that in a, in a texture file here, here in just a second. Um, we'll take a look at that. But um, like um, a JPEG, a JPG, is a compression format. It's, it's proprietary. Um, uh, MP, or in, in MP4, you have to have, you know, technically you're supposed to have licenses to be able to play those things since that's proprietary. So they didn't probably have tons of startup money so they wanted to, to probably go the, the easiest and quickest way possible, so they chose IFF. IFF stands for Interchange File Format. And basically, what it is, it's a four-character identifier. Now, you can, you can have a six-character identifier if you want. You can create your own formats. But the way IFF works, you have a four-character format. Then you will have a two-byte. See where it says OC? You will have a two byte, which again, I believe this is uh, Little Indian instead of Big Indian. I forget the, the two, uh, and it's E N D I A N. Um, but actually, this O C O O translates in reverse to O O C O. So you have to read it. You actually have to read it from the uh, rightmost position to the far leftmost position. And that is the size of the data chunk. So this is the data chunk identifier and this is the size of the chunk, and the rest should be data. Then you count off OC amount of data. Uh, let's see, so you have 9, A, 10, so it's like 12 or some odd bytes. Uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 bytes, so C is 12, and then you have the next identifier. So that's how IFF works. You have uh, an identifier, the next two bytes says how many how many bytes the data chunk is, and then you are to your next identifier. And you can see where you have CNAM, uh, and then you have, uh, it looks like six bytes of data, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And then you have an MST record. Now, the four byte identifier is not, there's, no, there's nothing fixed in stone. Um, it's just basically a concept of, chunk identifier, they call them chunks, chunk identifier, chunk size, and that's it. So if you want to access, and the reason IFF existed is because they didn't want to have a proprietary data format where you had to parse all these different values. Let's say you had to parse the, 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 the width of the image, the height of the image, the depth of the image, because they knew that would be different depending on what system you were viewing this image on, because different platforms, systems or platforms, uh, has different formats. So by using IFF, you can put a data chunk in there that would be specifically for the Amiga and have a data chunk in there that would be specifically for, let's say, Apple or Microsoft because you would only load or look for that data chunk that you wanted. You could actually access those data chunks. And that's what Xedit, uh, Rybash, and a lot of other applications do, and I'm going to be doing the same here shortly is you're basically going to read this file and you're going to break out each chunk. Um, and you, you can put that chunk in a list and then each one of those chunks has, it's a record, so each one of those records has fields in it. And again, that would be fields like uh, ballistic weight, range, uh, things like that. Uh, and, you know, diff different, ver different values that um, the game uses to give you that experience. Um, it could be weight of a weapon, weight of bullets, uh, name of a, it's, it's, name, it's the name of an item. So in this case, uh, all right, so, so before we get too much into that, let's, uh, and I get way, way, way sidetracked, let's keep going forward. So we have an MAST. Now this is the master chunk. This is a chunk that defines the master uh, plugins that this particular plugin needs to work. That's how it knows. That's how mod managers know. That's how anyone who writes anything like that knows that this particular plugin needs Fallout 4 ESM 
and that is it. That's all it needs to function. Uh, it, 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 that's, you know, that's its master. So that's a list of masters. Um, I'm not sure what a whole lot of these uh, do. So like a name chunk might be uh, the actual name of something. Sewer suit, um, this might be the name of an object that is in this particular file. Um, this right here looks like, uh, you, can, you can clearly see inside this particular ESP, here is a reference to a BGSM. I believe that's a materials file. Um, and you can literally see, so you could go into a, uh, for example, let's say that, um, let's say for example that something isn't working right. You know a texture isn't working. You could go in here and look up texture. All right, we want to make sure we're going forward. And you can see the very first reference in this text file of textures. Shared, cube maps. Um, so you can see this. Now some of this data can be compressed. Um, and again, this looks like garbage because this is just numerical values that could represent any number of a lot of things. Just a lot of things. Uh, but I did want to show you uh, this right here, which is your header information. This is your, and this thing right here tells you the different types. Of, it, I believe if I remember correctly, some of these values will give you a version number that's in floating point format. Um, it's got the size of the header, the whole header section, which has, I think, information down through, I want to say CNAM, I want to say down through here, like this would be the whole header section, um, even though it includes different chunks. Um, and then you have uh, the masters. The, the masters might be part of the header, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't looked at it that close, not yet. Uh, but I wanted to show you at least this much. So you can easily grab an ESP or ESM, and uh, this won't have it in it, but we might be able to do this. Um, I do have Mutant Menagerie. So let's look up. Uh, okay. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to take a look here. Let's, let's go in and edit this puppy. What I want to do, I notice I have purple turtles. So let's do, right, let's see if there's anything in here that has turtle. I don't see anything in there that references turtle, uh, which might be the, let's see, let's look up texture. Again, we have maps. Um, I don't know if I can do an F3 on this. Let's try it. Let's go up here and let's do, um, I believe it's F3, four, find again. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so there's only one reference of texture in here. Um, and I know the textures are stored in your BA2 files. Um, so I'm not sure. I would, I would think that they would have some reference in here so that um, it would know which one it was looking at. But I believe that would probably be in, if I'm not mistaken, that's in a NIF. And we'll look at that too. All right, so let's start doing this across the board. So I would think textures are ESP, references to textures, not the actual textures would be an ESP, but no, let's keep looking. So what I want to do is I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to bring up my game folder. All right, and we're going to go into the data folder and we're going to do this on a bunch of different files. So what I'm going to do is let's go into um, meshes and let's take a look at ammo, something that's simple, fusion cell. All right, let's open this. Uh, let's do an open with the same thing. Uh, we're going to look at, um, let's look at it in a hex editor. Let's see what we're looking at. Okay, so there's all kinds of information in here. It looks like we have Gamebryo file format version. So it looks like we have a text, <coughs> sorry, header at the very beginning. Um, that ends in a carriage return or line feed, right? Um, yeah, carriage return or line feed. So it looks like you're reading this until you find an OA, which like I say is a carriage return or line feed character. Um, and that's going to give you your header. And then you have different definitions. Or in this, in this, in this mesh file, you're going to have different files that are going to basically give that, give that, the rendering engine, not only the shape of the object, but the texture, 
uh, materials and things like that because I can see in here we have texture references. Um, right here's a material reference. And this is generally what would cause a crash because you would have um, a, a, a data structure that has embedded data structures. So it assumes if it, got the NIF, if it has the NIF, it's got the, the material file, and the data in the material file should be accurate. If it's not, um, then there's no checking for it, and it will cause a rendering crash because the, the rendering appy will try to use data that it's not supposed to use, and it's, going to, uh, it's not going to work properly, and that usually is a crash. So let's see if we can find a texture. Let's see what we have. Okay, so here we go. So you literally... Uh, one of the things I did, uh, what I call a quick and dirty program, it's just something to get the job done. It's, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just needs to get me the information that I need. Is I open a NIF. I literally just open it like a file. And I start scanning for anything that ends in DDS. Right? So I, here's a DDS. So from textures all the way to DDS, that is the name of the texture file in that NIF. Uh, and it's the same here. So it looks like there's three textures that this thing uses. Now, if you notice that, um, and I'm not sure where the turtle mesh is. I believe it's in a BA2. I'd have to extract it to check that. But And this, this is a loose NIF file, so it's easy to check. So if I know that the ammo box is rendering purple, so I know that it can't find the texture, I can go in and look at the NIF, um, and this is not using any program other than hex edit. Um, I know the data, I know the texture name for that ammo box is in the NIF file. So all I have to do is load that NIF file up and search for textures. And if, the, and if that texture, the, that texture name does not exist in an archive file, a BA2, and it does not exist as a loose file, then the texture is missing, and that particular object, whether it's an NPC, a creature, which is an NPC in a way, um, or like uh, just a static object like a rock, a tree, or, or a box, or a gun, armor, anything, is going to be purple. If, you know, again, if, that, if you can't find that particular file name. Um, so that's one way you can kind of break this stuff apart um, if you don't really, if, if, a, if a mod author hasn't provided you that functionality, not a mod author, but yeah, an, a, a pro, if a programmer hasn't provided you that functionality through their application to easily answer that question or provide a debug function, um, you can actually look the stuff up yourself. You can look at the file using a, a hex editor or a, something that displays stuff in hex to actually see what data is in there. Um, and like I say, you can write a very, very simple, like a very, very simple program would be to load all of this file in, in, into a, a text string. And then you search that text string for uh, like period, like, like, a, like a NIF, an extension, like period NIF or uh, a texture file, period DDS. And you can, and I've, I actually wrote a program like that. Um, it's in the utility folder. Uh, there's a bunch of utilities I wrote real quick, just try to get me some information. And uh, it's not perfect um, because sometimes you don't have a full path. Sometimes the path is implied. This is a relative path. So it means this is relative to where the game is, in the, the data folder, um, where the game is installed, the data folder, data path. Um, so it would be uh, uh, right here. So like where you see textures, it basically uh, would be um, the Steam, iSteam, Steam apps, common, Fallout 4, data. And then textures, it would start here where it has meshes. It would be textures instead. And that's an easy way to check to see if something is missing. Um, animations are a little bit more difficult because they have node breakdowns in their file format, things like that. Um, all right, so let's take a look at another file. Let's, um, let's take a look at, um, let's get out of the meshes and let's go to textures. All right, let's take a look at, um, hmm. Let's see something that's fairly simple. I don't have any arm. I don't have any ammo. Um, let's take a look at lens flare. Let's see what lens flare is. So you can see that a DDS file is a texture file, but I want to see what's on the inside of this. So let's open up this with hex editor. Okay, and let's see what we have. So it looks like the magic number or the file identifier is DDS. So 
That's how it knows if it's at least a valid texture from that point. Um, this is the compression format. So you have a lot of data in between DDS here, in between this, which is the file identifier, and the compression algorithm or compression format that was used for the image. But if you look a little bit closer, um, I'll show you a really cool way to do this. So I know in here has to be the size of this image, has to be in here somewhere. So I'm going to look at, I'm going to do this right here, I'm just going to mouse over it, and it says the dimensions are 2000 by 2000. Okay, so I know that somewhere in this data from here to here must be a hex value for 2000 by 2000, that is the width and the height. So, but I, if this is in hex, this is decimal. So I need to convert that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to here and I'm gonna look up a conversion for decimal to hex. All right, we're just gonna borrow this real quick. All right, um, I'm, I am definitely a robot and, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. All right, so we wanna go in here and we're gonna enter 2000. So we're looking for, now remember, it's in reverse order. So we're looking for OD70 is what we're going to be looking for. So it's in reverse. So we're looking for OD70 instead of 707D0. So let's go over to here and see if we can find, um, I apologize, D077. I, I, yeah, it's not totally reversed. It's byte reverse. So it's 7D0. So here, here is a... D zero O seven, right? So I told you incorrect, not O, not zero D. It's going to be D zero. It's going to be this byte. This byte right here is going to come before. This byte is going to come before this O seven byte. So I should be looking for D zero O seven, and right here it is. So this is more like, and usually width comes before height. So here is width and height. Now. I noticed that um, we have 16 bits. Okay, so I have 16 bits. Each one of these is a byte, so that's 16-bit word. Um, I know images can be much bigger than whatever 16-bit represents. Um, so if we wanted to tr figure that out, we could go in and do uh, hexadecimal to decimal, and we're going to do one, two, that's one byte, that's 16 bits. So the, the, that means the image width and height is 65,535 pixels. I know it can be bigger than that because you can have really supersized images. So I know it's a word. So the image size is technically four bytes, 0007D0. So that's the width and that's the height. So I know by looking at this file, I can check to see if the first four characters are a DDS space because uh, ASCII, you look at an ASCII table, you can literally see, I don't know if you've ever done this, but we'll look at an ASCII table. And you can see uh, what the values actually are. Um, so what we're doing is, see, we're looking at a space character here. See the space right here. And you have 32 is the decimal, but the hexadecimal value is a 20. Okay? So, um, and this is the ASCII table for characters. So when you, that's, that's how... When you see like a, a hex edit thing and you can see text in here like DDS, a capital D would be um, like a 44 here, right? So you got 44 is capital D. So if you go over here and you look at hexadecimal 44, it is indeed a capital D. See, 44 is indeed a capital D. So 4444 is DD to the computer, and then of course you have an S. So I do know it's a DDS file, and I can check the width and the height. Um, this is, I believe, MIP maps or something. I forget the format of it. But this is how you, this is what you do to break down your files. Uh, that's how you can uh, literally parse your files um, and determine what fields do what. Sometimes it's a long process and takes a lot of time. Uh, and with enough people doing it, uh, it happens pretty quickly. And that's how the ESP, ESM formats and BA2 formats, all that stuff. Uh, you can Google it. All that uh, came in to be. Um, let's take a look at another one real quick. Let's go back over to data, and let's take a look at um, a BA2 file. 
So let's take a look at textures. Uh, face gen is going to be big, so let's not do that one. Let's see if I can find the unofficial patch um, that will have some BA2s associated with it. Okay, unofficial patch. Let's look at the texture BA2. Right? We're going to open this with, again, the hex editor because I want to see the data that's in this file. Um, all right, I must have missed him somewhere along the way. Here we go. All right, so here is a BA2 opened in the text editor. And as you can see, here is the magic number or the file identifier, btdx. Whereas maybe in Skyrim or Oblivion, that would be bsa and then uh, a null value. So it's four characters, uh, but it's null terminated. So you know you wouldn't actually include that in your identifier text. So B btdx. So I know. So if I open this up and I look at the first four bytes, I know this is a btdx file. So I, I'm going to have to use whatever format I've defined or someone else has defined for this file. But what I wanted to show you is at the very back of this file, at the very end of this file. Let's see. Um, will be, as a matter of fact, we'll do it like, I think it's right here, because it only has like one texture in the file. At the very back of the file, the very end of the file, is the texture names. So basically, in this file is an index. Um, the old term used to be like, on a hard drive, it would be like a VTOC, but this is volume table of contents, but this is an index. So in this file is only one image because there's only one file name here. And I'll show you another one here in just a few minutes. So this one file, this one, this one image file is all of this data. That's what all of this is. That's this data. Um, and you can tell that it probably, the header of it starts here, where it's DDS. It tells the format, and this is probably data that defines the width, the height, whether the, whether the image is compressed, um, what type of compression was used, things like that. Those are, those are, that's part of that custom format. But then the actual image data follows. And you need to know whether it's compressed, how it was compressed, is it uncompressed, in order to read that data and extract or use it. And that's kind of like what the game engine does. So when it, when it asks for this texture right here, um, let's go to the bottom here, uh, let's do it like this. So when it asks for this texture, the the game engine knows that this is the only texture, but I'll show you one that has many textures here in just a second. But let's just say there's more. It says, oop, I found the image that I, I found the name that I need. It's the very first image. So up in this giant file, the very first block of data is the image I need. And then it reads it reads how to do it, and then it processes that data. So if any of this information is wrong, then this data, when it's decompressed or extracted, is also going to be wrong. The image could be fine. It's in a different format. So you need to know this information uh, before you can extract it. But what I'm saying is you can literally look to see, is that texture in there? So if you're not really sure if that file exists, uh, you can look it up. And sometimes I like to kind of get down to the nitty-gritty, you know, down to the... The dirty is not the term, but it, it is a term, so I can use that. Uh, but just get down and get your hands dirty. And instead of, like, having an application that I can go up here and literally say um, in like in the archives, literally, uh, and that's probably gonna be a lot of files. Let's do textures here. Show me what's in it, and then let this thing literally do exactly what I just said. It finds that name table, and then it extracts all those names, and then it's just gonna throw them up. And that's basically all that little function does, that little piece of code does, right? It opens this file, um, let me find it. That I might have closed it here. Um, 